Now let's finish by talking about some special considerations. Okay, so with a lot of foods that we'll be talking about, they are just typically one macronutrient. So I'll give you an example. So oils would typically just be healthy fat. Carbs, uh, or excuse me, uh, vegetables uh, and fruit would typically just be carbohydrates. With the animal protein sources that you're consuming here, typically they are also gonna consume, a de they're gonna uh, contain a decent amount of fat in them as well. So, um, and this balance is important. So take a couple examples uh, on either end of the spectrum. Chicken breast would be an example of a super, super lean protein. So very high in protein, about 50 grams of protein if you're having half a pound or eight ounces, super low in fat. So if you're doing more of a bodybuilding diet or a lean, um, leaner protein diet, that's gonna be fantastic. Bacon, on the other hand, is gonna be the exact opposite, total reverse. So, and most pork in general, with the exception of like pork tenderloin and, other, and pork chops, is gonna be much higher in fat and lower in protein. So bacon, not a great protein source, it's gonna have some, but um, it's gonna be mostly fat and not as much protein. So if someone's doing a ketogenic diet, well, then that is going to, you know, a much higher fat, moderate protein, super low carb, then bacon is going to be a really good option there. But you should remember that with these animal protein sources, it's going to be a mix not just of protein, but also of fat. And we'll talk about this when we get to the uh, macros video on fat as well. Raw versus cooked. So <clears throat> you'll see a lot of debate and discussion online about this, and you know, you're welcome to weigh and measure however you'd like, but if you're weighing and measuring in my fitness pal or something like that, I would advocate that you weigh your stuff raw, or really the easiest way is look, you got a pound of ground beef, you know, and you're cooking it up, and you put half of that pound, uh, let's say after it's cooked on your um, plate, then you write just eight ounces in my fitness pal, and that will calculate out um, you know, the rough amount of protein that you've consumed based on whether you're eating ground beef or chicken. Uh, the problem is that there's gonna be a decent discrepancy between these two. So just to give you an example, if you cooked up a, uh, let's just use a half pound for right now. Let's say a half pound of uh, 8515 ground beef. By weight, that's gonna be 227 grams before you cook it. And then depending on the method you cook it, you know, I'll typically roast it in the oven or saute it, that can come out anywhere around like 150 grams by weight. Um, so we're talking a pretty significant difference there um, in terms of what it's going to yield when you enter that into MyFitnessPal or some other program. Which leads me to uh, my final point, which is a very common source of confusion, grams versus grams. So this is a question I hear all the time about protein that people get very confused about that let's try to clear up. Okay, let's take eight ounces or half a pound of something. Eight ounces of protein, whether it's ground beef or chicken or what have you, would be two, roughly 227 grams uh, by weight of that meat. So if you put that meat on the scale, it's going to say 227 grams before you cook it, typically. That's what it will weigh, because a full pound is 454, so half of that, 227. But that same eight ounces pre-cooked is going to be 100 grams of protein. Why? Because, well, for many reasons, but the, the main reason being that not all of that weight is made up of protein. Some of it is made up of water, some of it's made up of fat, some of it's made up of, of other things. So. The weight of the protein is not the same as the total amount of grams of protein. Which brings me back to one other point that I should have made up here. A lot of times when you're looking on the back of raw meat or even on a nutrition facts label, whether it be online or in MyFitnessPal, they're giving you the nutrition facts data for raw, not cooked. Sometimes you can find cooked, but generally it's raw. So that's one of the other reasons why it's important to um, weigh and measure things typically raw. All right, guys, so we covered how much protein you should be having per day, uh, what kind it should come from, and some special considerations to take into account. Hopefully now, you know, if you're looking to make macros a part of the way that you uh, get a sense of what to do with your food, you have a sense of how to go about doing this now, especially with protein. In future videos, we will cover carbs and fat. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.